Europe, if there is a strong North Atlantic oscillation, uh, the uh, weather or the climate in Europe, in Northern Europe, Central and Northern Europe is mild, uh, but rainy and in Southern Europe it's relatively dry. Now, it's not clear how much of this low frequency uh, uh, variability in the NAO is driven uh, by external forcing, say by uh, anomalous sea surface temperature. However, what we know is uh, that these variations do drive changes in the large-scale ocean circulation, and these changes in the ocean circulation in turn drive changes in the sea surface temperature. And you see an example here, the North Atlantic sea surface temperature averaged uh, uh, from the equator to, to 60 north. And you see nicely uh, superposed on the long-term warming trend the strong multi-decadal variations. And if you remember, you know, the Sahelian rainfall and the hurricane activity show fairly similar variations uh, uh, during the 20th century. And so uh, if we can predict these variations in the ocean circulation in the North Atlantic SST, we may be actually uh, 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 it may be actually possible to predict, uh, at least to some extent, these variations in Sahelian rainfall and in the Atlantic hurricane activity. Now, but what is the potential? Uh, this is just a study, a, a kind of diagnostic uh, study. On the left, you see the decadal predictability potential derived from control integrations with global climate models. And uh, the point I would like to highlight here is that this figure looks completely different to a, a figure that would show the interannual predictability potential. All the interannual predictability, or most of the interannual predictability potential is in the tropics, El Nino. However, if you move to longer time scales, okay, this is the predictability, the potential predictability of 10-year means, of decadal means, then you see the potential moves out from the tropics to the higher latitudes. And one region which I highlighted already is the North Atlantic. So the North Atlantic seems to be one region uh, which has relatively high decadal predictability potential. Now, you all know the, uh, the North Atlantic uh, is, you know, the, the home, in, in a way, of the thermal hairline circulation or the meridional overturning circulation. And uh, we have conducted uh, now for many years uh, what you may call uh, classical predictability studies, perfect model experiments, and here is just one example from a white paper, white paper of, of Jim Harold, which will be published soon, uh, uh, where you see that uh, the, the strengths of the meridional overturning circulation may be predictable, uh, provided you have suitable initial conditions. You can initialize uh, your climate model. And there seems to be quite some skill, and uh, uh, there is significant skill out to 10, maybe even 20 years. And since these variations in the meridional overturning circulations are connected to the variations in the North Atlantic sea surface temperature, okay, uh, there may be the hope that we eventually can really predict the decadal changes in uh, highly societally relevant quantities. Now, again, uh, we cannot predict volcanoes. We cannot predict uh, uh, the, the uh, solar radiation. However, what we can do is, if they happen, okay, we can account for their effects. And these effects may be quite long-lasting. For instance, volcanic effects uh, can live in the ocean for more than one decade, all right? And so we, we should be prepared to include uh, these effects if they happen, and then this provides some additional predictability uh, to our system. Now, here's the real thing, if you want, two forecasts for the upcoming decade, and you see there is a large, of, uh, large spread, a large uncertainty. One is the, the, the British model, which basically calls for a continuation of the current trend. The other is, is uh, a study that we did in Kiel in collaboration with, with our Hamburg colleagues. And uh, you see, you know, our prediction is quite different. Well, uh, let's wait 10 years, okay, and then we can gather again and see, you know, uh, who basically wins the bottle of champagne here. Uh, last point, challenges. Well, we have heard this. Uh, we need to initialize our climate models if we want to 
uh, uh, do these predictions, these decadal predictions. We need a climate observing system, especially an ocean observing system. I just want to mention this. I think tomorrow there will be much more discussion on these issues, uh, but no prediction, you know, without observations. All right? Thanks. Uh, then, model biases. So this is really an issue here, model biases. This is from the latest IPCC report. This is just the ensemble mean error, okay, in surface air temperature. And you see, uh, even in the uh, ensemble mean, you have errors of several degrees. In some models, you have errors of up to 10 degrees, 10 degrees, okay? And so I think we should be very cautious uh, to uh, take uh, these models as kind of realistic or just apply some correction methods, you know, and believe that these models would really uh, uh, provide uh, uh, some uh, 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 realistic information. They are not useless, yes? Okay, and, uh, but I think we should keep in mind that they have these large biases and, and we should really work on the models to improve them. Now, resolution, Tim has uh, uh, alluded uh, to this also in the ocean, you know. Uh, here is the Gulf Stream front. You see these beautiful structures. Uh, this is actually a, a, a picture which I like a lot, you know. It's uh, almost like, like uh, uh, a, painting, uh, a painting by an artist, right? But it, it is the, the sea surface temperature, the, you know, at some uh, special uh, uh, time. You see these very narrow structures and uh, current models which we use uh, or which we used in AR4 in the last IPC report uh, cannot resolve these structures. So here is a nice sensitivity study by Minubi. Uh, on the left you see the observed rain rate over the Gulf Stream region. Uh, in the middle, you see a high-resolution atmospheric GCM, a global model, 50-kilometer resolution. You see the simulation is right on, pretty good, okay? And then on the right, you see a model where the SST, the high-resolution SST, which was used in the middle panel, was smooth, smooth to a cost-resolution SST, so that the model doesn't see any more the fine-scale structures. And you see the result. The simulation is not very realistic. So this calls at least for resolution, so brute force may help us here in some way. Now, where are we today? Last point here. Uh, first of all, I think we have established that there is really a predictability, a predictability potential, decadal predictability potential for a number of societal relevant quantities. Second point, uh, we need a better understanding of the mechanisms of decadal variability. I think the models do produce uh, the variability, but the mechanisms are all over the place and differ from model to model. Uh, climate observations, as I said, no prediction without climate observations. And finally, to reinforce the point, we need really good models, and uh, everybody who knows me uh, uh, is aware of the fact that I'm definitely not one of the skeptics, okay? And, uh, if my name was not Mojib Latif, my name would be Global Warming, all right? However, you know, we have to ask the nasty questions ourselves, all right? Or some other people will do it. And therefore, uh, we need uh, really a coordinated uh, scientific program under the auspices of the World Climate Research Program to realize the full decadal predictability potential. Thank you for your attention.